Um, welcome to the second installment of the Rocky Ideas book. The first was already quite productive, <coughs> as far as I can tell. And, well, uh, should I begin with one idea or would yeah, one of you like to start? Okay, I'm going to keep off. I think this would be a good idea. Uh, the, the idea is that for cost compilation, we have to, uh, we have to be careful <coughs> that um, the build dependencies don't currently say whether they are for the host or for the target machine. So if you want to cost compile, we have to have the, uh, all the libraries uh, available for the target machine and all the tools for the host machine, which the current build dependence doesn't uh, quite distinguish. Um, well, the, um, the solution would be quite obvious to have uh, another, uh, um, an uh, another uh, control file field. I, uh, I'd like to call it build depends tool. And of course, the uh, binary in that uh, variant for that as well. Um, the, uh, the, the, that will. Uh, um, just allow us to, to, uh, to distinguish uh, here, and um, the, so the default is to install stuff for the target with the normal build depends because most packages only list libraries. And um, in case of cross compile, uh, basically, in the, uh, in the, uh, if you're doing a native build, you just install all of the build dependencies. If you do a cross, com uh, cross compile, you install uh, the tools on the, uh, on the host machine. This, uh, and all the rest on the target machine. It would be well. So with the you got build dependencies too, but that's actually for the native dependencies. Then yes. Is it? Yes. What about swapping that around and doing build across dependencies? So that you're actually only listing. You leave the existing build depends line intact. But you just list the ones that we need for cross compiling. Um, could also be done. I thought it would be better this way because most most of the packages uh, don't uh, don't uh, only list a single tool, their helper, and uh, a lot of packages uh, actually list libraries, so they, so their actual input would be smaller. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Like you're um, you're thinking of those, but. Just list, say, then help on GDK, and then they're, they're looking for all the yeah. dependencies we've built by um, SH Lint Devs. Yeah. Um, the idea is that, that, that you can uh, basically uh, uh, make the transition, uh, for, uh, for one thing, it makes the transition easier because you can just go through the entire archive, look at, uh, look at the, uh, those packages that have Dev Help or CTBS listed, and just um, Automatically provide a patch that moves the, those to build depends tool, and that that, that would catch you, eighty percent of those, the archive. Yeah, but if you kept those as they are, and only specified build cross depends, you wouldn't need to change any of the packages. You would really only need to change the ones as they crop up. Uh, yeah, could also be done. Um, the important thing is not to call them host or target. Yeah, because that that's confusing. Yeah, mm, yeah. True. Because. Um, I've got a little bit of support for build cross depends already in the tools. Uh, you can look for that. We're currently looking for it in Debian X control as a new control file. Yeah. We can we can easily put that into Debian control via yeah, that's the, the XX uh, prefix even before it's, it's formally adopted. Um, it's a question of whether it's easy to have it there. Um, How many things do we have? Change to implement something like this. Is it just dpackage and dev scripts, or is there a whole lot of stuff? I think uh, the, the only thing that I really cares is auto uh, uh, builders and uh, dpackage build package. And pd, <coughs> yeah, pd build. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so it, it, if we if we believe build depends as it is and add in a new field, that's less changes because we. The only, yeah. the only scripts that need to look for the, um, the new field are the ones that are interested in the new field, the cross compiler ones. Okay, makes sense. Um, um, make it short note. Yeah. Okay. okay, anyone? Move that, 
duplicate the right and left screen. It will duplicate certain parts, but we, we can't avoid, I, I can't see how you can avoid that because we can't tell from the build depends line which ones are actually needed uh, by the cross compiler during the build. What, what if you do something else? What if you try to push this as, as a change in, in the way the Debian packages are? Well, proper. Well, yes, if you, if you push to change policy, yeah. Actually, mandate that everybody states which are build time dependencies for the targeting for that. Yeah, that, that's, 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 that's not that's easy to actually determine. But you, even for my own packages, I couldn't yes. say, uh, uh, no, even for, even for the packages where I'm, I'm actually upstream, I couldn't be absolutely sure that I could specify the cross dependencies for the packages I wrote myself. That one of the ones I actually maintain that will by other, other people upstream. Um, it's not inevitable how you would actually identify which ones of the build depends are actually needed by the cross compiler at, at, at build time and then which ones would also be needed at install time. The actual install time ones are fairly well picked up by the existing scripts so, so far. How would uh, maintain or would himself never cross compile something no box to put in the very different, very different. The only way I've found so far to determine that with any reliability is to actually run a cross compile uh, build in a ch root and see where the package fails. Because at the moment there aren't there aren't any so checks. How is that maintained for somebody who well, it's just uh, we can package. quite easily give people a tool to do um, e building using QEMU or something. Yeah. It's not actually hard to generate a big cross build of things. Yeah. It's basically equivalent to telling people to use PD build to check that in fact you're not relying on things yeah. in your system as opposed to actual, actual specified dependencies. So we could provide essentially the same technology to do cross builds automatically, and then you we have I make have it easy. Of, no, you're right. I mean, unless yeah. you do that, then there's no real way for the average yeah. maintainer to find out. I have a um, script that could do that. I could separate that from it then in tools to make it a separate package on its own. So it's easier to, to install uh, without having to uh, install all the rest of it uh, and yeah. having tools for the rest of it. Uh, the QEMU build already exists. Yeah. Hmm? QEMU build already exists. May well be the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, basic rule is if it's a dash dev package, then it's probably a cross build dependency. If it's probably, but not necessarily. We don't yeah. want we don't want to um, introduce ones that aren't actually yeah dash uh, right. dev. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that don't, you see, that won't work. Yeah, yeah but uh, that's not that, that's built essentially anyway. So, from an Debian point of view, we're throwing away essentially, and even the build essentially in many ways. So, rejigging the dependencies from the bottom up. Yeah, it would be nice to get rid of build essentially. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, so that you could actually specify everything. Yeah. I'm not sure that the gain of not specifying GDPC nearly everything. <laughs> Uh, that that makes big pain if you try to port it to a different libc. Yeah, and doesn't libdebs take care of that for us? Well, not if you've written depends code on glibc. Yeah. Well, build depends. Or build depends. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, say uh, 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 the that only cares about runtime, not about the build dependencies. That's a problem. That's a problem. And also, you don't want to uh, have uh, uh, ten thousand packages specifying. Uh, libc and then do, do a libc migration. Well, you probably go to libc7 there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Um, yes, we do. Otherwise, how are we implement this migration? Yeah. Uh, I mean, de source packages. Yeah. Most source packages will work just fine with libc7 dev installed instead of libc6 dev. Yes. Yeah. And if the <coughs> control file says build depends on libc6 dev, yeah. then they won't. Yeah. When, they, when they could. Because we put the version number in the package name, it's difficult to just say any old Because it's, it's, because it's a survey, yeah. Actually, it's because libc is broken uh, and uh, it uses libc6 dev as a package name and not libc dev. Then we do that for loads of packages. Uh, actually, most of them uh, have unversioned de well, uh, dev packages. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's to do with whether you want to allow uh, the two libraries to be 
installed at the same time for transition yeah. maintenance, so that you can actually have yeah. whether you want to have um, libc 6 dev and libc 7 dev installed in the same system, mm -hmm. yeah. or whether you want a four split on like when, when you see all its brain, it's like it. slightly towards this. Um, if packages that were at least clever about it had some, if there were a standard way of naming the host compiler or a standard way of naming the, well, I suppose you really mean a standard way of naming the host compiler when you're building cross. Is that, that already exists? Yeah, yeah. So what? No, no, what I mean is if there was a way for the package source to say, this I want to compile with the host compiler because I'm going to run this executable now rather than put it in the package. Yeah, you can set okay. that from yeah. bypassing the white options with building the Autoconf already supplies and it should. Autoconf gives you both a GCC and the target GCC. Does it? Yeah. yeah. You pass build on the GCC. Well, of the GCC as well. Throughout, it should. You should say, you know, your your build stuff should say which compiler you meant. People don't very well often because they haven't really ever thought about it. But mm. The facility is uh, well, most of the time. Well, what's the default? If you just say CC, it assumes that build equals host. Yeah. So it determines the build and then assumes that the the guess to check. No, no, the no, no I mean, is. if you write dollar CC in your make file, yeah. Yeah. which compiler do you get? The, um, the, you native. Get the, CC, the native one. You get the native one, so that's precisely wrong. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, which means that which means that a, a, a package maintainer who is aware of this problem and would like to make it easy for the cross people by letting them set an environment variable that points the new compiler. Like, like these. That's the. Um, yeah. That's yeah. Basically, basically all uh, uh, packages built uh, with uh, DH make and using that help already do this right. And I think the CDB also do, uh, does this, right? Yes. Well, by passing crazy options through... You, you can you call in by, um, by passing the dev build can you... That bottom, that bottom line, that dev host can you type. Yes. You, you, know, you query that um, by a deep package architecture, <coughs> you give that to a variable. That's, it's, a, it's a standard call that you pass to configure. You would put um, dash dash host right. equals deep package architecture, query dev host can you type. And then you would do that for, yeah. the, uh, for the build type as well, you pass that to build, and from then on it is automatic. All you need to do is pass... So if I was using autoconf, how does this work? Uh, if you're not you using autoconf, then you need to, uh, to uh, use this as a prefix in front of the compiler name. So I have to say everywhere on my make file, dollar, del, bin, boom, pipe. No, you can redefine CC. CC. Um, I have to say CC equals if, this. If, yeah. if, build, if build does not GC equal host. Yeah, if build does not, so you, you, you so clearly those two you're, you're, you're kind of not thinking about this from the right point of view. Think about it from the point of view of a lazy maintainer who doesn't want to get involved with all this crazy crap. Right? <laughs> really? so think of it, put it like that. And what, you want, what they want is I want to say, Fine, if I need to, you know, there's three places in my system where it uses the, where I need to use the native compiler rather than the target compiler, and I don't want to change all the rest of the references of the compilers in my thing, I just want one change. Use CDBS. <laughs> right, and I don't want to use some crazy crack. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there is a page which defines things you should change. I mean, I think the answer is set CC equals that once at the top. Yeah. And if you yeah. need a host compiler, which only very, very few the packages actually do, uh, define another right. variable so, called so host it's, CC. So it's silly that the default is the native compiler when the default ought to be the cross compiler. Yeah. Sorry, you talk to the auto compiler no. people. That's the historic default. But uh, it's not going to change because it will cause huge pain. What, in auto comp or for well, everyone people? who uses uh, native compiler? Native, native yeah. compiler. But that's the majority. Well, no, because if I'm doing a native native build, then the native compiler and the target compiler are the same. 
Yeah, obviously, obviously it doesn't matter if I choose the target compiler yeah. because it's the same compiler. <laughs> yeah, but that, that, that is that's this right. Yeah. If you have, uh, if host that is the default. Uh, uh, dash dash build and dash dash host are the same, it uses CC or GCC. So you, uh, in, in this case it detects it's not cross compiling and uses the native compiler as CC. When you, these are arguments to configure. Yes. Yeah. In the, in the non, non autocomp case, you have to handle that yourself. That is basically what autocomp is for. Yeah. But it, 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 it would be much nicer if this could be set in some way where you didn't have to thread all of this clobber through your rules file and then through autocomp to no useful effect. Well, but it, it does this automatically. If you watch the actual. This is a bar conversation. If you, if you watch the actual um, build process, you'll find that uh, if you use the ordinary. Um, uh, deep package build package, it will specify build and host for you using the environment variables. You only need to specify build and host if they're actually going to change from what your current environment well, why don't we says. talk about this in the bar? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Anything else about uh, build and host? Uh, host? Um, uh, no, host and target? Uh, <laughs> It's confusing enough as it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and you know what you're talking about. <laughs> we get confused as it is. Yeah, the, the big problem is uh, build uh, host is the machine you're building on, target is the machine you're building for. Yes. Uh, GNU uses build as the machine you're building on, host is the, machi uh, the machine uh, something is running on, and target is the machine you're building code for. So they have three. But that's because if you're building a tool chain, there are three. Yeah, yes, yes. Yes. The, the, the name terminology is basically, you know, unintuitive to everything. Any, any normal train. mortal who hasn't spent ages thinking about it is already, it's, <laughs> so, which pretty much guarantees they'll get it wrong. They yes. just look at the file and go, "Oh, it must be host." Must, you know. <laughs> oh, actually, it's not. <coughs> but, uh, it's, yeah. That's bad. But, okay, so I think we're to well, we we need okay. to decide whether we are going to try and make this a change. I have these two two variables and put them in and put them into control files, or just add an xx one, which is kind of easy and we don't have to argue with it. Yeah, I, I, I think we, I think uh, since policy only follows existing practice, we'd have to uh, introduce this in xcontrol, and um, if, if we have enough mind share, then yeah, we can uh, propose I mean, to try to this this xx facility which has been provided because that seems like the ideal way. Rather than having a new file, we'll just um, that, yeah, what you put in the control file with XS, XC, or whatever depends on where where you want that information to get uh, in the end. Well, it's our script that will be reading it, so it doesn't really matter where it is as long as we know. Yeah. As long as the, uh, as long as tools don't handle it, ignore it. Uh, if yeah. we if we want uh, want to do that, then then we have to add two lines, one for uh, one for uh, the host and one for uh, for, uh, for the target. <coughs> Because normal build depends uh, would have to dispose. But if we duplicated some of that anyway in the build cross depends line or xx build cross yeah. depends, um, you can leave build the original build build depends as it is. The less changes we make to debug control, the easier it is to push it, get the next up, uh, update through without patches failing. Yeah, that's true. As so long as there isn't some. I mean, it is kind of nicer yeah. to have two, which lists two things separately, but it yeah. doesn't amount to the same thing, having one which is everything, the other which is the difference, yes. uh, I suppose. So, yeah. All right. I think that's quite that. Yeah, the prospect of replacing the build defense line with the cross defense line. When you make the tool, line, then uh, trigger it should be on X, XS dash stuff, yeah. make a regex match against X any series of letters hyphen thing and also on just thing without the x hyphen and then you will never have to change it again. Yeah. yeah. That could be done. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, the, the problem is if, if a certain packet is needed both in the, uh, for, for the host and the target then you need to have a way to specify that too. <coughs> that is true. So then you have to write it in three places. In yeah. the original build depends in the one and in the other. And the, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, that's why I put this happy and having two additional yeah, lines. Yeah, well, and does that happen, in fact, probably? No, I'm not sure it does. Well, it hasn't happened so far. But uh, I the first 85 package is a big deal. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, think, I, think, I think it's... Yeah, well, the question is how painful is it when it does happen? There is also that. 
Uh, I think it would, for example, happen for something like libset dev, which could just be used for, for some build tool, and, uh, and because it needs to compress something, something during the build, mm -hmm. and uh, also, uh, also needed for the target to uncompress what, what was compressed during the build. So I think that's quite likely actually mm -hmm. to happen. I'm inclined to add two lines, even yeah. though it's repetitive. Yeah. If you just add two lines which replicate all of the information, yeah, yeah, essentially, and just replace it for your cross builds, yeah, that will mean that if the build depends are somehow wrong, you'll have a kind of extra place to expect exactly. the build just yeah. to you. That, that, that's uh, that's one of the ideas behind the Debian X control file that that, that we have another control file where we introduce these features and have a preprocess and builds the normal control file from that. Removing extra features. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what? Including <laughs> 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 the slash control dot patch. We've already done that. We've already got that. Control dot patch dot pl. No, just control dot d. It does seem excessive that we do already have control dot patch and the next control file. And there's a mechanism for adding extra variable names with xx. Yeah. It seems like too many mechanisms. Yeah. I think we should scrap one of them. <laughs> anyway, yeah. details. Okay. So, but then, then, effectively, we've already implemented part of this, so I think we should we'll, we yeah. do so. In okay. Uh, this only affects a small number of packages, is that true? No, yeah. it affects most, yeah, most, most packages so. eventually. Yes. Oh, okay. And the more we build, the more it will affect. <laughs> This would be nice to try and find a way if you did not have to change 18,000 packages. Well, we are, we are anyway, because we're cross building them to change the lead dependencies. Everything else is cool. Nearly everything else will change a bit, unless. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, in this yeah. case. Yeah. I, you can't, it seems like you can infer. Because this is. Yeah, I think. For, except for, for, except for we these can automate cases. the generation of the, the new separated list in mm -hmm. most cases, I think. But. Yeah, writing it down in this separated way rather than concatenating as it has always been yeah. essentially affects every package we can't. Yeah, once we have critical mass, we can also make this a, uh, uh, also, um, uh, tell people to, to go fix their packages. But uh, at the moment, we have 85 packages, and yeah. Okay, next idea. You didn't have any more ideas? Uh, of course, oh, I have people more. He's one. got loads. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, have a, I have a really bad idea. Yeah, um, go ahead. Going to hate. So at the moment, um, we lack a revision control system. Well, it's not quite true that we lack a revision control system. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. using the archive as a revision control system, and the archive is a stonkingly bad revision control system. However, it's only slightly better than what people have decided that they um, prefer. For example, there's the 40 million different kinds of patch system, there's um, the, um, the, the wig and pen format, which nothing knows how to generate, there's people uploading um, integrated revision control system, you know, the kind of RCSs that have their repo in the working tree, like uh, Buzzer, and I think Git does this as well. Sometimes you find source packages in the archive that have revision histories in them. Mm -hmm. um, and the whole thing has become a complete clusterfuck. Mm -hmm. So my proposal is, and this is going to be completely controversial, is that the Debian project should choose a revision control system <laughs> and replace the source archive with it. Yes, this was proposed in, in Ubuntu as, yeah. as a yes, source it, yeah, so this is long source package. package. They, they yeah. said sourceless package or something like that. That's the name of the proposal. But so this is a lot easier in Ubuntu because uh, Mark Chuckleworth can just decree that everybody will use his favorite revision control system and exactly. then he needs to have an enormous three year long flame work. Exactly. So that's why I'm proposing this in the silly ideas bot and not on some menu list. <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously this is not going to fly, but I would like to plant the seed in everybody's minds to realize that you know if you describe our development workflow to almost anybody else, they will boggle at you, right? If you go to a BSD developer and say, you know, so what do you do to generate some change? They will look at you like you're completely barking and say, 
didn't that go out sometime in the late 70s? And the answer is yes. Well, okay, people were doing it still in the mid 80s, but, but, but by that point it was already looking a bit long in the tooth and people had realised that, that revision control systems were the way forward. Um, also, it makes deriving, dealing with the derived distributions of all kinds really painful. So we've got the embedded people who are doing effectively a derived distribution where they carry a patch to every package, yeah. and they've got some crazy, crazy clusterfuck of a crazy nightmare, yeah. and we've got Ubuntu who've copied everything and applied their own patches, and every time, every six months, the Ubuntu people take all of these patches and they've got some crazy cron job that diffs them all backwards and forwards and tries to wedge the patches back in properly. And, yeah. And and and, and, everything and there's, we've got we've got all the other um, the, the the other derived distributions who don't even bother with any of that and just copy Debian once and then fly off into the sands until they die. <laughs> and, 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 and the whole thing is just a complete disaster. Surely we must be able to do better than this. So I want everybody to go away and think of workflows and good ways of doing things that might actually, you know, and how to get from where we are now to somewhere that's not a complete nightmare. So next year, we, when we meet, next year, we have 10 new systems. <laughs> ten, 10 new systems, right, and then we can have a larger like, bake-off. Or something. Maybe we have already about seven uh, right, right. systems the, on Debian. The key thing is, if we can come up with some kind of interface, the, the, yeah. one of the things that we lost, it used to be the catch, right, 10 years ago, you could download a package, you could write a program that would download all of the source packages in Debian, unpack them all, and then do some kind of code analysis on all the .c files in them. And you can't do that now. And the reason you can't do that is because you go deep into source-x on some package and you get a bunch of tarballs. Mm. What? What the fuck? Or you get a bunch of code that exists, but in fact you have to take these patches here, which can only be applied by running some code from over here and some code from over here, and it doesn't work on stable anyway. Um, it used to be, right, so now we don't anymore have, supposing I've got the name of a binary on my computer, it used to be that I could take this binary and I could find out the source code that that binary was made from entirely automatically, and there would be a standard way of doing it. Now, there's no standard way of doing it. Debian developers don't notice this very much, most Debian developers, because they live in their little world where their package and maybe a couple others that they care about. But if you're trying to do embedded work, or you're trying to derive like the Ubuntu developers do, or you're trying to do anything like that, anything like cross cross archive, totally it's consistency. It's a complete nightmare. Yeah. I nowadays I'm using rsync, right? My standard approach is unpack the package, and I never build in this tree because the the the, 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 the rules files are too unreliable, and the patch systems are too crazy. So what you do is you rsync to a build tree, and you build it, and then. You see how it goes wrong, and you edit the built tree, and then you have some kind of crazy diff room to recreate one of these patches if there's a patch system or some other thing, and then you are it again with dash dash delete dash a to, to and then you rebuild it. And you use you rebuild all the packages from scratch every time you make a change, um, and you use Ccache to make this only take ten minutes. And <coughs> <laughs> it's it's like. You know, I, I mean, I had better software development tools than this in 1989 on my 8-bit microcomputer. It's just incredible. Uh, so, so basic, uh, yeah, basically, we, we need one tool that's... We need a standard interface. I don't care what's behind it. There needs to be a standard interface for all the usual operations, which are get this particular version of the source. Um, and then, when I say get source, I mean make a directory on my disk that the, 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 the thing that roughly gets flipped to the compiler so that I can edit it in my editor without having to do any you know, weird shit. Yeah, we, we, we do have uh, all these patch stacks, for example, in dpatch. Uh, right. That would have to, to be modeled properly, I think. Well, the, because you, you don't want using... to lose... The reason people are using these things is because they want all the features. Yeah. Um, so, and the archive, the native archive system is too feature poor. And that's why people are using, you know, it's, it's too poor a revision control system, so they've decided to pick a different revision control system which is better for them but worse for everybody else. Now, this is a perfectly normal economic thing that people do, but it would be nice if we could impose some kind of structure on the situation. I mean, the, the obvious answer is to have 
A B division of draw system that has uh, all the files in it or something. Or, or even even something. even half a dozen revision control systems, provided we have a standard script. Right? In in theory, you're allowed to write your um, Debian source control change logs in a different format. No, nobody's ever written a parser for a different format. But you could do something like that, where you know you say get source for this, and it goes and looks up and finds out, oh, well, the source of this is kept in Git, or the source of this is kept in Docs, or in TLA, or whatever, and it fetches it. Or maybe it's in the normal archive. Okay. I mean, is it practical to put the whole damn thing in uh, a small number of source repositories? Will something explode because it's unfeasibly so large? Well, you could have a separate repository for each one. That would, I mean, it doesn't. I'm not. That explodes. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just. I'm not, you're not suggesting a particular thing. I would say if you did something. Yeah, I, I, I think put the whole damn thing in Git. That would definitely work. work. That would definitely not work because then when you wanted to check out, you know, especially you wanted to check out the source of hello because you've noticed a syntax error. Um, you then have to download the source of X as well, right. and Mozilla and everything, and it would just. You always get the whole. You always, would get, you always get the whole tree. But yeah. A lot of the projects will use a revision control system upstream. It's only a case then of tying the upstream uh, revision control system with the Debian packaging code. Right. We don't need necessarily to mirror all of that in our own. As long as there is some form of tag on the upstream um, RCS. Right, but at our, own, identify our own patches, our patches and our packaging with these scripts and all that kind of stuff, we want those. I mean, that's why people are having these patch systems. Is because they want those under revision control, and I want them under revision control too. And for the packages that I'm upstream and Debian maintainer for, I wouldn't do anything but keep the whole thing in a revision control system. Let me propose one. Yeah, that's even crazier idea to solve your idea. So, what if what if we kind of design or something like that? Do something like a backend which would actually work in the same way as the upstream revision control system. So actually have a mirrored revision control system which is actually the same as the upstream. So you can actually do something like differing and using the same revision control system so it's kind of compatible. So if the, I don't know, the maintainer of hello uses SVN, you, you, you've got a backend for that and you have the package in, the, in SVN. But if the maintainer uses Git or something like that, you have. But it, it's also crazy. But you would actually have to put them somewhere behind an interface, and you. Right. That interface would have to live on. Right. If you're checking something out, that interface would have to live on your system, because having it indirect through the Debian servers all the time would be. Painful for the Would really something similar like that? They have this because SVN two bazaar. Yeah, they, right. have, they some have some products. crazy thing. They have some crazy thing that imports all the repositories that anybody's ever told them about into their own giant buzzer. Yeah, yeah. each okay. one is a, a repository, and they sync uh, right. periodically. I'm not sure. How. Right, right. They have some kind of import mechanism. Well, it's similar to what. So the, they have a local mirror of, of what the upstream has. If, if you have a look on, on Elliot for that, the team maintained packages. Mm -hmm. Each team sort of has its own way of working and its own yeah. revision control system. But between teams, the, the, they're actually quite different. And, and I think what, what you're sort of proposing here is, is you sort of take one team model on, on Alioth and sort of try and apply that across uh, across Debian. So we've got we've got a consistent approach. So you are it, it isn't subdivided down at the team level. It's 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 it's, it's from the that's, layer higher. Ideally, I'd like not to have to change everybody else's workflow mm. because well. That means I'll have to change my workflow as well because the, the compromise that everybody comes up with will be not the ones I like. And, and anyway, then getting that through Debian cat herding party would be impossible. Um, so I think the message we can hope for, at, at least at the beginning, is some kind of at least a unified interface where certain operations can be performed. So you, in a unified, in a unified way. way, in particular, you want to be able to. Ideally, you want to be able to get a package, fix a bug in it, and then do it in a standard way that doesn't involve having to know all sorts of complicated stuff about the way the team structure their workflow, where you get to interact in a standard way with maybe some local tool, maybe some, you know, I don't know where the interfaces are. Yeah, that's the question, isn't it? Where are the interfaces? Because we already have a standard interface for getting a package and fiddling with it. And it's just that the fiddling with part can be very different. Right, 
like, what I mean is, if the package, for example, if the package is a, is a C program, that, you know, if it consists mainly of C code, that what you get when you've unpacked it is some C code that you can grip. Um, so that a lot of the time, you know, you, you, you want to fix a bug in a program, and often the non bugs are quite easy to fix if yeah. they're happening to you. And you don't want to have to learn all about the way this program is behaving and, and, and all this other kind of stuff. And really, we've, we've made it so that it's very hard to work on packages that you're not intimately familiar with. And what about the difference? Because if you, I'm upstream for a couple of projects as well, as well as looking after my own Debian directory in that I don't put it into the tarball, but I will check it out and build the package using that. It's my own way of doing it. Well, lots of you do the same thing. But the actual upstream CVS is very, very bare. It only contains the make, make file AM, the C files, the configure.ac, and a few other little bits. The actual um, source tarball that I send up to Debian is much, much bigger. It must be at least 10 times the size because it's got the makefile.in, it's got the actual generated configure, it's got a whole range of other stuff. Now, if you're actually going, uh, you've got to have some kind of way of determining how to get from the upstream CVS to a usable um, package where they've run autogen and they've done the first configure and things and actually done a make dist. Well, I mean, if all those tools are installed on your system, in principle, those tools could be installed on the... the you know, I mean, satisfying the build depends is yeah. quite easy. That We've mm -hmm. already got an automatic way of doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So the, risk, the risk is that if you, if you do that with the, that disparity between the upstream CVS and the tarball you send up to Debian, just by regenerating all those main files, your diff G then is going to be huge because you could be running Autogen and all the various other tools under a, a more exactly. modern version of Autocom. Right, I suppose what I'm saying, what I'm right. saying is that, is that the, what we have at the moment where the, we've got this Orientar GZ and Diff GZ on, in the archive often isn't useful to anybody. Right? If, you're, if the package is really maintained in some revision control system, then ideally you want a convenient and standard way of finding that repository and checking out the right version from it rather than to be given some tarball that doesn't relate to what maintaining normally is. Yeah, so we so already have a, a field in uh, Debian yeah. Control that points to a it says, it says, it right, says right. But it's yeah. VCS. You've got, what, what you almost need is, like, we, 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 in Debian rules, we've got the configure target, we've got the binary target. What yeah. we're always talking about is an intermediate. And, 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 and yeah, deep, patch, deep, patch, patch. Deep, deep patch does it, but, but not, all, not all our revision control systems do it. But we're always talking about an intermediate target, which do whatever you need to do to the archive to get rid of all the tarballs and get rid of all the patch systems and so we so end up just with just before like package source code just before packaging. Yeah, right. There's two problems with that. The first yeah. is the first is, is a practical problem when you're editing your package, which is that you could run this unpack target, fine, but then you edit the code, you build it, fine, it works, it builds a binary, you test the binary, the binary fixes the bug. Now you go deepest build package dash yada 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 and upload it and it's not what you're changing it. Because you actually edited an output file. Yes. Yeah. Um, and the other problem, that is a real pain. and that is a real pain, and that's real one problem. reason why I don't, you know, why my workflow involves running rsync twice now, because that means that I never have the file I edited randomly vanished. Yes. Um, and <laughs> it happens. Yeah. Yeah. It happens, right? It happens all the time. If you do this a lot, it happens all the time. You just end up with a workflow that means that never happens to you. You put lots of RAM in your computer, you get lots of disk space, and you make loads of copies. Um, the other problem is that that involves executing a package, and there's lots of things that you would like to be able to do to a package without having, you know, for example, you're scanning the package for security violations, and it would be nice if you didn't have to, you know, instantiate a fresh virtual machine, unpack the package, run the crazy unpacking script which could download stuff off the internet, heaven help us, um, and then discover that it's rooted your, your test bed, you have to throw the <laughs> test bed away and get a new one. Um, yeah. Normally, you would like to be able to write a program that can examine the source code of every Debian package yeah. without having to trust that those Debian packages don't contain bad shit. Yeah, in principle, is, this would be Wigan Pen. Well, Wigan Pen is, is, is partially there, but it's not really very sufficient because, well, because you can't. It, it's trying to be its own revision control system, isn't it? And it's not a distributed revision control system, but it doesn't have merge tracking. If you, if you look at Wigan Pen, plus the Debian archive as a revision control system, 
which is the way that any you know individual who's a FreeBSD developer and ask them how, how it looks to them. They go, why why have you invented your own crazy revision control system when there are already at least you know, enough. there are half a dozen revision control systems that people are actually using in anger, and at least at least three of them people disagree about which three are actually usable. <laughs> <laughs> True. So how do you fix the, as you say, it's easy to kind of unpack. How do you fix the repack? I just want to change this file. And is the only way to I fix that to do away with the magic unpacking part? I think so. Yeah. So that's one of the strengths of Debian, which I guess when we grew from sort of Thousands and tens of thousands. That was one of the strengths because we, we 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 were enabled we were enabled to have the diversity that people could do whatever they wanted within these scripts. But it's now turning into weakness because we don't have any consistency and we don't have any coherence. So. so originally, these patch systems were only used for very large and cumbersome, difficult packages, um, where essentially it was practically impossible. You know, stuff like X, right? And you you couldn't. X was an enormous source package and it would take hours and hours and enormous quantities of disk space to build. And unless you were some kind of wizard, you were basically doomed if you were try even trying to fix the most trivial bug in any X program. And the build dependencies were a nightmare and the build system took ages and it was very fragile and it was just hopeless. Um, so the added, so there wasn't much resistance, you know, and when the X people said, oh, well, we meant such a crazy patch system as well, there wasn't much resistance from anybody because all the people who who would have been hurt by it weren't doing it anyway. And now, now that any every tin pot little package with a 10k line C program in it is using a patch system, it's really starting to bot because they're always using a different patch system. Yeah. And I was forced to use one recently because I wanted to incorporate the original package and its docs with some of the docs of the wiki. And you can't make a patch that would um, just like stick all this stuff in there. I don't know why. Um, you, you well, can't create patch all the files or something. Yeah, yeah. You can't patch files you can't, away. You can't patch files away. That was yeah. It. yeah, I couldn't get rid of stuff. So you have to go, oh, there's this magic system which will let me take this tarball and that tarball and stick them together and magic and things. So, so now I'm doing it too. Only because I couldn't do it the original way because it's shit, as you observe. Um, <laughs> so, so why are you complaining about it? Well, I'm just saying, you know, I'm saying, well, I mean, everybody's, everybody's doing it and they all have a perfectly good reason, but yeah, it, there is a problem with them. It's not entirely So if the, uh, the patch system world has, has kind of congealed now, right? People aren't, you know, there's, there's not a great deal of new innovation and fancy new exciting patch systems coming out. The latest thing is Quilt. Quilt is good, but Quilt's, you know, Quilt's been around for a little while now. And it's the point now where you can, you can sort of, they all work in roughly the same kind of way, and the same kind of, same kind of basic idea. And it would be possible to take the Quilt machinery out of the source package and put it in some developer tool instead, yeah. and have the source package have some kind of field in the control file yeah. saying, basically to say that our source packages stop being one format and that we now have six supported source package formats, one of which is a git repository and one of which is a, you, where, where the git tree is in the archive and you download it and it's a git checkout with a, with a repo history in it and one of them is a, is a deep patch thing and So is that repository that we can only hold our packaging code and our patches? And then we get the tarball from the original source. No, no, obviously not. Yeah, no, the important as well. Lots of good reasons. Yeah, the, yeah. the important thing is that it's machine readable. Yeah. Uh, that you basically ha uh, have a new uh, and declarative. <coughs> yeah. It's going to be enormous. Then we would have to support all uh, version control systems for all our streams. No. Well, we only yeah. if, if if the version control system that upstream are using is some <coughs> thing that they pulled out of their rear toenail three years ago and, and, and nobody else is using, then somebody has to lose. Mm. And the maintainer, the Debian maintainer, gets to decide who loses. Mm. And that's the situation we want. We've already got this problem with, with crazy orange tarballs and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Probably in that case you could actually fall back to just regular orange tarballs. Mm. Well, there's, yeah, there's no reason why the, the, the current source format would obviously be one of the options. Why well, do you have to discuss it for half an hour or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. but... Where does the government think about that again? Has anyone, have you actually thought about trying to define an interface? 
because that's what has to happen next. Somebody's got to sit down and think about it. Yeah. And, and we, we need to think about which operations a non-maintainer really needs to do. Yeah. <laughs> and after you've got those operations, soon you'll discover that non-maintainers want to do cool something things. else. They want to do that. They might want to do things that aren't supported by the current revision control system. In which case, it will say, "I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> this person's using Braindead for that." <laughs> yeah, and he volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I perpetrated the original mess, so I suppose it's my fault. But. <laughs> Right, it's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> fault. Deepatch isn't my fault, but I, I created the the, 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 the void that yeah. Deepatch did. Yes. So I was going to say two things. One is it'd be nice to come up with something simple for newbies, right? I'm kind of new to this whole group, and I don't really understand all what you're talking about. <laughs> so, but if you, to the extent that you can, you can abstract away complexity, but oftentimes it doesn't work. But if you can just make it simple, it'll make it easier for other people to join. Yeah. That, that and, the other, benefit. and the other yeah. thing I think that's important is, I know it's of course hard to get everybody to change what their workflow is in Debian, but if you can probably get them to change once. So if you if you could, you know, get meeting of the minds and decide, hey, we want to do X, and now of course it's going to cause everybody to change, but if you, it's just a one-time change. You, you don't bitch about it. But six months. One time. But you, six, you will six, never you will never be able to change the way the workflow is every. You will never be able to change on a general level the whole of Debian if you don't change the, the, the tools which they are using, everybody is using. So that basically reduces to DPKG, apt, attitude, and that's all. Because that's all the, only, the only tools which everybody uses and even, even if they don't want to change eventually they will be forced into changing their workflow in a way because otherwise there is no there's no constraint people will not do that if they are used to one time workflow unless they see the benefits and you will not see the benefits unless you try so people are reluctant to even try but don't, well, under, don't I, underestimate as well the number of packages in the archive that haven't even been touched for the last two or three years yeah a lot of just just an even if you wanted to change it, still take people like a year to get around to it. Yes, it yeah. involves anything non-trivial. Yeah, yes. we, we still but have you can change the we still have six, uh, seventy packages that use use a doc, I think. Yes. But and uh, but the one point I should say is that you can make a change. It's kind of a one-time thing, and, and everybody's going to bitch about it. But six months later, they all forgot. So yeah. Um, yeah. So you, you want to give everybody you want something that Devin has a very very long memory. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs>
but, but even so, I mean, that, that kind of generates a culture of, of well, just a more dynamic culture yeah. where, where people Does get around to things. Yeah, it, it, I think it, it helps a lot in, in trying to, because I think that the, one of the worst ideas which Debian came up with was actually owning packages. Because, because that created some kind of responsibility, but on the other hand, it created some kind of barrier into trying to fix bugs. And that's why I think we still have four digit yeah. bug numbers. No, yeah, that's not why we have four digit bug yeah. numbers. If you look at the four digit bugs, they're, right, if anybody cared, if even the submitter cared enough about this bug to spend the probably hours that would be required to fix it, then it would have been fixed. Right? I've got plenty of four digit bug numbers open and they're not easy. I've got dozens of five digit bug numbers on and they're all things like I want the libc behavior to change in this way that's incompatible with everything else but not broken. Stuff like that. And you just, that, that's not laziness that these things aren't getting fixed. It's actually, there's actually problems possibility. Well, on the other hand, there are cases when you actually cannot touch a package because the maintainer is really, really, really possessive about package. It, it's starting to go away. It's yeah, um, it, I've never encountered uh, a maintainer who, who actually refuses to patch uh, things. Well, well, there are plenty of them that are behind you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the perfect answer is offer yeah. politely to any of you. Provide a patch and say, what do you think of this patch? Mm -hmm. And if they don't reply, or if you feel like you can just say, I'd be very, very happy to prepare an NMU, and, and, and I assume that will be fine by you, unless you, you know, tell me other things. Within two weeks. Yeah. And, you yeah. say, yeah. and you say, you say, you know, it writes within the next couple of weeks, if, if you have an opinion. And, well, sometimes you get back this, this thing saying, no, no, your patch is completely bogus. Yeah. But at the very least, now you put them on the spot, and you've yeah. been helpful about it. And, yeah. and, and you've learned because you did it wrong. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes they were wrong and you were right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Surely not. Yeah. Okay, um, I've tried, uh, tried to condense everything into a single sentence. <laughs> That's a whole sentence. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, what you need is a, is a way to... Um, uh, is, a, is a declarative language uh, that, uh, that defines what to do uh, to, to properly unpack the source. Um, really, it has to be little more than an identifier saying what more complicated method is to be used mm -hmm. to select yeah. between different things and maybe indicate a version. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's um, patch management, isn't it? Rather than sort of pure, pure RCS. Yeah. We want to have we want to have three or four different standard patch management arrangements. Well, we're going to have to allow people to add their own, and we're going to have to tell them you can't use one unless it's unstable. Because not being able to unpack the source on stable will completely fuck backwards, and lots of people are depending on backwards, and that's going to there's going to be some resistance there. People are going to say, why can't I use my shiny new feature yet? And we say. Because it's shiny and new, and therefore it may not work properly yet. <laughs> well, that means it doesn't work in stable. Well, um, no. if you if you have a package that's whose encoding is not supported by any soft, whose encoding of the source code cannot be decoded by anything stable, right. okay. then you won't be able to backport it. So without changing the format, yes. Yeah, without right. reformatting it first on old style, yeah. Yeah, it'd be really hideous. Probably. Or package that may be featured on the PKG, like use variables, things like that. Yeah. My version of doing sideboards, backports, portal. Backports, you see. The rules for my sideboards. So, but you won't even be able to start fixing it if you can't unpack the source code. All the other problems can be fixed by saying, oh god, no, not that feature, I'll just delete yeah. yeah. Particularly if you're just doing it locally and you're not going to upload it, you just need this thing to work right now. And what you do is you delete all the stuff that's not compatible and compile it and hope. And 90% of the time that actually works. But you can't even start on that if you can't unpack it. If it's using a version of Dpatch. Then we, we just have to backport the new, new, new dev. Yeah. 
and then um, well, you could put the well you could put the new system in stable yeah. as a, as, a, as an update that would be yes I mean I mean yeah. cool. 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 to back up a new the feature for new version of for that's, that's the trouble the but if there's a new RCS system which isn't in stable yet then you, unless you back all the ones stable is incompatible yeah. Yeah. But there's nothing. There's well, nothing no, no, actually, I mean, for example, if you're using Buzzer, yeah, we you, you, have have terrible, you have terrible trouble if you're trying to do anything on. If you, if you, like me, you're on an Ubuntu app and a Debian app, it's just impossible to use Staples Buzzer on anything to do with Ubuntu because Ubuntu are all using some shiny new format that's new and shiny in ways that I don't follow. That's all changed. Yeah. And if you run the old Buzzer on it, it goes. Ah, 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 Topic. Yeah, okay. Abby, you want to say something about TDAPs, for example? Uh, yeah. Uh, Go ahead. So, we. <coughs> okay, so I don't have any slides or something, but it doesn't matter because anyway, it's important. Yeah, so the. The main idea, which, well, it's not, I'm not taking credit for it, but I'm part of it. This whole thing started in, in September last year in Extrema Dura. We were talking at the IAT and meeting about a way to provide selectively only some translations which the user desires to install in his system. So initially, we thought that the best way to do that be to actually make independent packages, uh, well, not fully flash packages, not dev packages, but because that would blow away entire uh, packages files. And you can, you, instead of 18,000 packages, you would have like, something like 100,000 million packages or something like that. Or a quarter million. Yeah, something like, you just can make a calculation, so it's easy. Just multiply the number of languages so with the number of of packages and I think we have 103 languages. Well, something like that. So it actually would blow away the packages file. So yeah, another another proposal was to actually have a separate packages files which would be called translations or something like that, which would actually specify things like the file name, it would have some other suffix instead of that would be tdebs because it's translation devs or something like that. To actually specify the language and things like that in the final bit. Anyway, we thought of that and I wrote a proposal for that on wiki.debian.org slash translation devs and well Agars also wrote a proposal which came after that discussion. And recently Michael Brammer uh, came up with a slightly modified proposal uh, about this and this uh, but this that one from the first day uh, we actually this I actually discussed with, with Wookie and with uh, uh, Neil uh, about in fact that the actually having separate packages for, for translation is not that a great of idea because you you have that problem with documentation, we have with development <coughs> files, and you would actually if you do it only with translation, there, there's no much benefit outside the IATN interested people. So but if you do it in a way that other people can benefit from it then you can do something different. You can do something that actually targets more than just people interested in translation. So, uh, could you go to the proposal from written by me? Yeah. So, actually, the idea is that you'd have something like uh, spec. Initially, that was uh, the idea to have some special packages which have localization uh, material, which it can be MO files, it can be for games, let's say audio files, which are in French or in the guy shouting in French instead of. 
or you, you get the idea. So they can be also architecture dependent, and that's why probably it was a good idea to have separate packages. But in the end, we saw we thought that maybe we should go back and look at the proposal for DPKG2, which was uh, uh, made by Scott James German, uh, I think two or three years ago, in defining classes for for files within the package. <coughs> So you would have something like you define a package for for a package you would define a class which says okay these are translations these are documents these are um, I don't know one pages and you apply some filters on them uh, at installation time or at some point build time or something like that you would actually the first idea was for MJVM people to use the remove filter. Uh, because they want no one pages, no documentation, no translations. So they, well, Neil was a really speedy coder and actually has. It's working now. Yeah, just got working in, uh, in the last half an hour. Oh, cool. So uh, now the problem is that, okay, although it's a really nice feature to have that for MDebian, it's not that a, a nice feature for a person who just wants to have the latest package. It, it, it can, it can, I have had that in mind because we were talking about it at the start. So there is potential for it to be extended the other way around so that you can actually control because um, it's a simple pattern match either on install or I'll be adding it as well so it's um, activated on build as well. So you can choose which ones go into the package or which, which package they go into and actually build in with the package build package. So that sort of thing can come in as well. So actually you were, you were thinking that we could do something like implement based on the filters, on the classes of packages, you can generate separate packages? It would be all entirely automated within dpackage. Uh -huh. So that whatever we come up with for where the translation files go, um, <coughs> then that could be automated entirely so that the maintainers would have to make okay, any changes to their packages. I, I think we should put right. everyone up to speed about what's the problem with, with just having something like you have a Debian package, the regular Debian package, and you split out, let's say, translations and installation time. You just remove translation and stuff like that. that. That won't go because actually you might have the possibility that uh, next time the maintainer is not type equivalent to the, the original. It should be so fuzzy and ignored. Yes, theoretically yes, but in practice it happened to Ubuntu that they were broken at some point. So actually, somebody well, that means that the tools were not sufficiently clever. Exactly, yeah. that, that, that doesn't matter. Well, suggesting that never happened. Yeah, it's I'm uh, suggesting that our tool should prevent that from happening. Well, yes, but you cannot patch get text to, to do that or something like that. I'm not suggesting patching get text because that, that right, the, the, was the, the, the message IDs are, are the original strings. Yes. yes. So when you look at the source package, when you're building yeah. this T yeah. You can tell yeah. statically from inspecting the TDEP whether or not it's type safe or not. Currently, currently, and you can just make the build fail. Yes, um, Again, this I is not completely true because you don't know if it's a printf string or not. But or maybe reverse it. Just I have another question which actually is related uh, regarding the package version. Uh, if I, uh, my understanding, I'm not a Debian developer, um, is that if there's a security update, uh, your file name will change. The file name of the TDEP would change. Mm. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it means downloading it again, even though it's exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, Wouldn't it be possible to have some intelligent hash of the original file, uh, of the original um, file to be translated, and keep this hash in uh, the control file? Well, I, the problem it would have <coughs> two, well, it would have two benefits. One, you don't have to download it again if it hasn't changed. Uh, since the last security well, update, well, and the well, second one was to address the problem described before, is that if uh, if it doesn't conform, you just you know it. Well, I thought I didn't quite understand your your question. But on, on one hand, you you always have the problem that even though you maybe had three or four translation updates in a TDEP source package, which which was your responsibility as a translator to do. Yeah. If you have a security update or a regular update in unstable, then it, it, it boils down to 
if the maintainer merges back your changes from the from the TDEP. So actually, if you if if you actually did let's say three or four updates as a, as a translator, you did the updates, and then the maintainer of the basic package does an upload. If he doesn't include your translation, then you your well your work is just completely bugged, isn't it? Yes. Okay. It's, it's, uh, assuming he he does include that. Uh, if it if includes the like, translation, the translation, you have a new version and the user downloads <coughs> the new translation, which is basically exactly the same as the previous one. Mm. Yes, but I, I think that it, not doing this way, it would be actually more harder than it would be a bigger can of worms than, than actually trying to just let them upload it again, and doesn't matter. What I mean is having a, a hash if inside the control file, instead of having the MD5, oh, okay. having, having a hash file, whatever, a kind of hash file uh, of what should be translated, it means... But that, that doesn't contain any versioning information. So I actually don't know if... Okay, this is your hash. The next version has the same hash, but uh, you when, just when you do an, an upload of the Debian package, how do you know that that hash it's okay for the new version? And how do you know Be that hash is bigger or less than the previous because version? Because the package includes the package, the Debian package of the binary files includes the hash of what should be translated. Doesn't work. Doesn't no. work because you would have the same hash in both. No, files. no, because Very actually good. no, you, you have uh, have a broken uh, uh, you have a broken workflow because actually you can't have Debian package now and then you have several updates later. And then you don't you what you do you do you have to rebuild the Debian package so it contains the hash which you have in the they have, TDEP. It's they need to be installable separately, don't they? Yes, they they would they actually the, the, so the having the translations in the original binary package is just wrong. Yeah. Yes. If you have a security update, then you rather issue the security update now and the translations get reverted to some. Exactly. To, to, you know, some translations get, get, get broken and, 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 and it reverts to English or whatever. It doesn't matter. And, and have a security update, yeah. and then the translators can fix the new string later. Yes. You, you want the opposite of a normal depends. Where you would normally do greater than or no. equal to, you want less than or equal to. So, that, so the, the most recent translation will always be available, even if the package actually gets a couple of stations ahead. Or the translation. No, I, I think I think it's overcomplicated no. to do to do that. Uh, I, I actually, and um, get text will ignore translations. That should be okay if, uh, if there's a second output. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, almost the so, so of nothing right. will actually go badly wrong mm -hmm. if the translations and the main package <coughs> are not are, are installed and out of sync. You'll just not get some of the translations. Yes, and you might not even notice. You might not notice. Them. You might not notice. You might well not notice. And if you do notice, well, you know, it's, not, it's not dreadful. It's just best. No time. Well, yeah. actually, the, the the way that I was thinking that you can do this and make it work would be something like when you have to get install the package, you get the Debian package, and then it infers which which right, right, right. translation. Absolutely. You ought to do that. You definitely ought to do that automatically. Yes, yes. Well, I completely agree with you. But if for some reason there that doesn't work, there's some kind of problem, then it's still fine to go ahead. Yes, yeah. yes, that, that's that's exactly what is described here. And, and that's and that's one of the main criteria for should two files be in the same package or not? Is it absolutely essential they get installed together? Well, in this case, it's no, absolutely not yeah. essential. So they should be in separate packages. Yeah, they're, they're kind of kind of optional dependencies or something right. like that. Right. And. Be. And the criteria for whether things should be in the same source package is are they maintained with the same workflow by the same people? And that's not yeah. the case either, so they shouldn't be in the same source package. Exactly. Uh, quite a lot of cases they are. Yeah. 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 If it's there, then we should use right. it. If it's so, not, then we were just talking about previous translation. So, we don't have a very good way of dealing with. Source packages from upstream that contain stuff that we didn't want in our source code. Yeah. Well, yeah, so that's the unpatch problem. That, that's that's one problem, and another problem is let's say you have released patch, and then uh, it's the case for French. They actually, I, I, I shouldn't say this out loud, but they only have one twenty percent translation. Code. 
or the PO or that package of things. Template. But anyway, they have one missing <coughs> template or something like that. Wait, what's the Nobody, nobody is insane enough to think that an update of a translation would break the package. But they can't do it right now. So actually, they would be able to do also for, for PO that on translation. So, so that, that, that's also a target. That's also a so we decided in our radicalism that uh, not only are these things all topical, in fact they're completely separate and we want to institute a new system that uh, does let you separate the language out and basically treat them yeah, well, as independently as we can manage, well, yeah, maintaining a kind of tie so that you know, ideally they yeah, can match up. But now, right, right, we've made just, just enough of a tie that most of the time it works right and that you automatically yeah. look and you want to use the same you just automatically decide to finish to install and that's going to require magic or something and we want to completely, there's a lot of, I mean, if you think of all the bookkeeping that goes into, into individual packages, a lot of that is unnecessary here. That's, we don't care, for example, if a translation package has one of its files overwritten. That's if you, if that, if that, if that is, that is, if you choose to get Yeah, yeah that's if you decide that the data package can provide the, the, the file which can be in the field. Well, the thing is that a localization package, if it, if it gets as much, it's not favorable. Exactly. And the reason why Deepkit, when it installs it on any package, reads the list of all the files that it previously installed in any package, is so that if if the package was all now, overwrite some file, and then you delete this package later, it knows right, uh, you're getting some bad situation with the file which is package. But we can tolerate that for translation, which means that the .list files for ddebs would not need to be read when you were just in a normal image drive. We don't need to read the dot list file for TDEP until it's all left in the TDEP and upgrading it. And the rest of the time, you don't worry. If some other file, if some other package clashes with it, then, well, you may lose a little bit. But you translation file might be You wouldn't want to change the overriding other packages. Right, so you still have to read other packages in this file, but the TDEP list files, which and the reason you don't want to read them is because if you have a system where you have lots of translations installed, some kind of demo system where you install them all, it will be an awful lot of files, a million files, and then when you, every time you start to have deep visual, this will fall off. Yeah, all of those. This is basically what's happening now, since everybody's installing all the translations. Right, but at the moment, the translations are not, they're one per package. So, so it's not one file not per one dot list file per package across yeah. translation. Yeah. It's just which would be just like if, we, like if you just want easily give deep use this file, then you have a serious performance problem very soon. And that means Yeah, but in, in a normal scenario you don't have you don't have more than four languages on a system. And, and, and actually, and and so so the main thing I think we want to shed load is there being possible version. Debian server Well, probably. Yeah, right. Yes, but on one on, side, you might want to do something like you don't you don't enable any languages until you install the PHP magic web interface. And just before that, you enable the translation. So actually, you would install this. You might be able to without this fix for DBD straight away. You do need you do need magic to automatically, basically automatically install and deinstall these translations. Yes. Like a shadow of the original. Yeah. Okay. Side question. These translation files include the package description translations, or is that separate from? Uh, no, it's 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 a set, it's, it's a different thing. It's a different thing. That that's in, in that's already in a separate area in the, in the repository. So it's they don't go in packages at all. They just no. It, it's a it's a it's a it's IATN packages or something like that, and there there you get translation of the packages. So I I've, I've long been of the opinion that that the extended descriptions shouldn't be in status or packages at all. No. Even the English extended description should be a separate file because yes. this causes lots of performance problems that you don't really care. You don't normally care about having precisely up-to-date descriptions. Make sure each file is a lot bigger than it needs to be. Right. Yes. 
and it means that Romanians have to download the English when they didn't need it and stuff like that. Whereas you could have a Romanian language file that contained the English text when there wasn't a Romanian text. <coughs> Okay, um, another, another proposal was, uh, I, although Michal is not here, I would like to take that into consideration. Maybe you, we could take this TDEV issue and maybe extrapolate that to classes of files, like documentation, one pages and things like that in dev packages, and transform most of them in this kind of shadow packages. So actually you would want, it, when you want to install a package, you just say, I want uh, dpkg. And if you enable some some switch or option or something like that, you say, okay, I want dpkg and the documentation and the development files and everything yeah. that's one page about it and everything that's all sorts of things. So, and well, you get reasonable, yeah. also get yeah, the... There are some nice possibilities here. I think we should be careful when we design our code not to rule this out, yeah. but also we should be careful not to immediately enable it. Because if we're not careful, we will create an explosion of... At the moment, we've got a bit of a problem in the archive of maintainers who think their 10k package needs to be split into six sub packages. And if we go down this route, before you know it, each one of these six sub packages will be split into four packages itself. And there'll be now 24 files in the archive, each of which needs to be separately version tracked and separately installed and separately. Um, putting man pages in translations and other similar stuff in translations does make sense. But we do have to have automatic machinery that checks. And it has to be not in, in deep of it on the uh, install time, it has to be at the point of archive acceptance. Something has to check that this TDEB contains, well firstly that all of the get text strings are type equivalent, and secondly that it, the package only contains translation files or man pages or the things that it's explicitly allowed to contain. Yeah, um, um, why don't we do that build time? Because we don't trust people build Because people. at the moment the translators are going, we're, we're going to let so people. Yeah, we should okay. so yeah, yeah, so always check twice. Yeah, true. Um, <coughs> I, I think checking it at archive time is, is the security check, and the previous thing is so that the uploader gets told now rather than it sits out of time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a sneaky message from time. <laughs> 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 well, I think we need a multi layer approach. But, but, you can basically uh, say that there's uh, uh, first level packages that are uh, in the packages file and everything, and there's sub packages that contain a, 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 some component that not all, all people want. Uh, in case the sub package is large enough to, write, uh, to, uh, to uh, for this to actually make, say, uh, make sense. sense. Yes. Okay. And uh, on, uh, on the third level. Really, the only translations that currently have this special case. It's, documentation is another possibility, but yes. current arrangements for documentation, they're a bit clumsy, but if we, for example, invented a, 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 if we had a strict, a strict machine readable rule for package naming, then that would make the whole documentation yeah. thing just yeah, for go away. Yeah, for example, I could, uh, I could think, uh, think of um, making the uh, architecture independent parts of, the, uh, of a large uh, package. Uh, I could uh, imagine uh, turning them into a sub package. We have that sometimes with data files. Yeah, there are some yes. people who've done that. But these things can be done ad hoc. Yeah. Translations, <coughs> translations are really special, yeah, and we should special. invent. We should be yeah, clear yeah. that we're doing something. Translations are a really hard problem because every package has a hundred sub packages, yeah. and the user needs to be able to select which kind of columns. Yes. The yeah. in the matrix. There, there's so, also yeah. that this is, I, I think that it would have been a good idea to advise people who want to attend to this meeting to look at this page before yeah. talking because there are many of the issues which were raised here and are dealt in, in the in the proposal. And we, I think we've talked, I think, for six it or seven hours good. about this. So no, we still didn't read it also. <laughs> <laughs> You're a lazy bastard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you keep asking me questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, uh, the, the 
point, uh, the point of saying to make uh, not all, not all uh, um, uh, if you have three layers, the uh, first level packages and sub packages that uh, have sep uh, that are separate files uh, uh, on, uh, in the archive, but uh, that don't appear uh, as themselves in the package list on, exactly. on the third level, some, some kind of a manifest that, uh, uh, that further splits up um, uh, an, a single package. Um, for example, if one could combine uh, several languages into into one uh, package, if, uh, if each translation has like uh, four kilobytes or something, yeah. and then we just com uh, combine the 25 of them, uh, uh, users would have to download 100 kilobytes, uh, and then just extract uh, one or two languages. So you actually combine the filters idea at install time with yeah. with with a file approach. Yeah, yeah I, I think that in some time filters. Are a by and large a good idea. Yeah, they're a powerful yeah. general technology that uh, is helpful yeah. with this that stuff. That would be helpful with this stuff. You have to think carefully about exactly how you use it. You want to be yeah. very careful. I think and, and it, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant, right? Every time we've introduced new fancy features into our packaging system, you know, we've got a thousand developers and they one percent of them go off and do something completely fuckwitty, <laughs> and that's ten completely fuckwitty packages then, which everybody else has to, you know, have heart ache over. <laughs> yeah, but there's also related to that of filtering, exactly not exactly the translation. Um, they could be very interesting things for a system administration to do with filters. They say they uh, they are allowed to define their own field kind of classes of files, and they say something like. For this class of files, I don't want any backups, or for this class of files, I don't want any intrusion detection system to check them, or all kinds of fancy yeah. things like that. We, we, in theory, our files are already classified. Well, position in the file system. system. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's not... That's uh, a remarkably good job of that, yeah. considering all the things we've always been very good at. Yeah, uh, but it's not, not 100% perfect. For example, uh, translations, but like, uh, like uh, audio files for a game or exactly. Asterisk audio files, they 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 uh, they live in um, uh, some package subdirectory. And yes, sometimes they use uh, share some package, maybe a media DE or media French or media thing like that. That's because there isn't a good place to put them. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. so if you mention the place, then they will go there. Yeah. Yeah. If the question is uh, whether we sh uh, shouldn't have uh, some sort of a manifest file that uh, lists all the, uh, all the files in the package and uh, declares what they are, like documentation or documentation and if we have that, we have that, it's called the data target. <laughs> no, uh, uh, you can't always tell from a file name. The right, in cases yeah. where you can't tell from the file name, that's because the file system standard doesn't call out that particular kind of file. For a special notation. Mm. You're suggesting yeah. that we shouldn't invent a new interface to do that problem, we should fix the problem. We could, I mean, if we think that's a, I, I think that's one possibility that we haven't properly explored. No. There might be reasons why we didn't want to be, you know, inventing a new. As he says, we could well, talk about this for several hours. Yeah, uh, and this is not really to do with translations anymore. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the problem is that this is not really uh, auto, uh, complete uh, autogonal. So, uh, so, so, because there, there are things, uh, if, if some file is uh, English documentation or uh, English man page or something, uh, it would come into uh, completely different directories. So, uh, so either we end up with, with a huge list of directories, and yes. we, we have all the, uh, all the 18 and infrastructure under user share doc, under user share man, under user share info, and so on. Um, do. User share package language. If you have yeah. the same media files which are localized, yeah. User user share user share package. It's true is that you can't tell from a file name which language. Well, a human can tell, yeah. but the computer can't reliably tell because where in the file name the locale is encoded is not well defined. Uh, but that can be defined, it can be Yeah, can but be that would mean to actually patch every application all over the world which actually has some localized 
and we it's got its own weird. idea of how to find its local localized files, and you don't really know what the access. Would, would it make sense to uh, to to allow a package to to define it in, in in some control file to, uh, to, uh, that it adds uh -huh. cert yes. certain uh, new new yeah. regular expressions oh, that the match a certain thing? Yes. Yes. saying file name, and then you go some special symbol in the thing, which which means this is where the local Current characters five and six in this yes. package, and yes. characters twelve and thirteen in this package. And yeah. So actually, every maintainer would define that yeah. because they actually Something want the translations just go away to the translators and let them deal with that. The, are there packages that have non-standard names for languages? Yes. So that doesn't help you there because the well, the language when it's, it's if you've got some kind of filtering system where, where, you where it's kind of no, plucking the language out of the file. You provide a translation table though. No, so no, it's, it's right. This is getting out of hand. No, it's, I, I don't think this, there are. This is so that's the kind of thing you want to do a package build file and not that. Yeah. I so you can have the you can have the T there contain a manifest as Diamond suggests, which defines which. Files belong to which languages. Yeah. But this is, in, but in many cases you can infer it. Yeah. The the, the other exactly. the other idea would, uh, would have uh, would be to have this information in the main package. If if the main package adds some directory where to put uh, localized files, then it, it would have to define the, uh, the, this directory. Like user share my package. Local is uh, is some place where. Uh, uh, well, about about your question, if if. If there are many packages which define really non-standard way of specifying locales. Actually, there there are not that many. They actually either say uh, uh, two-digit two-digit code, or they say language dot encoding, or two-digit code dot language encoding name, or something like that. But there, there's only let's say four or five schemes of defining that because otherwise and there's nobody has their own crazy mapping table. Uh, nobody calls English. Well, UK. Well, if, if well, they some do, packages have in the past, though, if, but if they do, they they, they, they kind of have some kind of standard mm -hmm. code. They yes. learn the coding yes. or something. They, they actually do something that it's let's say yeah. easily. Yes, yeah, so this is not the kind of computation you would perform during the install. Yeah. What you what the installer wants, what Dibbish wants, is a very clear. Declarative rule yeah. that says, does the user want this file? Yeah, exactly. And that means that the file has to be tagged with something that you can yeah. match against a set of desired kind of manifest class thing. You know, right, right, exactly. Yeah. 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 Also, well, also, we could uh, we could simply file uh, bugs against the ten packages. That, uh, no, no, it's not reasonable to ask the Debian maintainer to rewrite the i18 in support in some giant crazy package that was written by astronomers ten years ago. Yeah. But, but also, a lot of the I8 in support is in, is in embedded in KDE, and I, and I presume no, um, in terms of a standard way and a standard format of how, how it should be. Well, so they, most, most applications so get text. The, the other reason you want this yeah. information in the TDEV and not in the corresponding DEV is because if you have version skew, you want to be using the information from the TDEV that you are installing and not have what proportion of the TDEV ends on disk depend on what dev you had at the time you unpacked it. The question is also whether all the packages are, uh, really commit the, uh, the version skew uh, uh, and uh, that don't fall over with it. I, I think GetTax can handle it. Your text doesn't just just falls back to the uh, uh, anything that can't handle it. We'll have to do with plan A until we can fix it. If, if okay, it that's a very serious problem. If it can't cope with missing translations, no, it, it doesn't cope with missing translations. It just falls back to the English in yeah. text. Right, well, yeah, but well, the question is, like, does Mozilla? <laughs> I know that. Well, for, for that uh, case, is, if, if it doesn't handle missing information, then you actually say, okay, for this kind of application, for this application, for this package, I'm not splitting it in TDEV, so 
We'll just put it in the back yeah, there. So it should be better than it's the current well. situation. At least yeah, we well. haven't made it any worse. Exactly. Yeah. And maybe we'll fix this problem before we fix before we Or maybe we can come up with some workaround that makes it fit into this. Um, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Put English in and put all the others in there because that wasn't necessary to stop it exploding. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you can use the to kind of um, rewrite the space. Could, could you speak in terms of that? <laughs> We think we have enough info to rework this page now with a plan that will actually work after this is finished. Well, with you. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. You're going to go away, you're going to write this page with what we seem to be. Well, uh, there, there were many there were many ideas floating around, so I yeah. we have most of them on tape, but uh, I think five minutes or so might be missing. Uh, that's a good problem. Nobody's going to want to go through the tape. No, that's just not practical. Yeah. Oh, I, I will definitely go. So a, a, a meeting like this should be used to produce decisions. Yeah. So the question is, do you have a clear idea, you think, of what decisions <coughs> we have reached? Well, let's, I, let me first summarize it. So actually, I, you would have to take my word for granted now. Uh, what I have written initially, it's quite good but we haven't quite decided if we want to do something like uh, sub-packages. It's not clear for us if we want to do that, but it seems like a good idea. What, the T-Devs? Is that what you mean by sub-packages? No, actually also month pages of documentation besides the translation. So you have translations, month pages, documentation. Oh, I think you should avoid tapping that at this stage. Okay. Crawl walk run. Mm. Okay, so for the first step, we want just translation depth and maybe... It's fine to leave design decisions in so that it will be easier to do the doc split packages later. Like yeah. if not, don't try and... <coughs> if you try and include that in, in this proposal, you'll get all sorts of other people interested in this and they all have different ways of doing documentation and that's not yeah. really what you want. Mm. This, this, uh, this, this gets you uh, invited into the groups like these, but... <laughs> <laughs> Docs only multiplies it by two as opposed to by a hundred. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very different kind of thing. Yes, uh, yeah, well, I agree with what Ian says. I mean, it, it, it's, it's kind of nice, and um, we might want to do that. But, you know, keep that bit of quiet, really. Yes, we've done it. That, 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 so, actually, it's quite a question of how you actually access the people. Uh, yeah, I was, I, uh, there so, were also some. some uh, I, I, uh, <coughs> Okay, let me just try to figure out what I want to say. Uh, there was some idea that there, there would make sense for some cases to, to just have one TDEV file with all the translation. If the translation files are really small, let's say 4 kilobytes per translation and things like that. Uh, that would actually mean that you would have to do something about situation like this and you actually provide some manifest file and say this if you want to install this type of translation you would have to actually get the common TDEV and filter out things. So there is a question I have here which is that if these translation files are so small that we're going to bump them all in one package and make use of download it, how much extra costs are we imposing on the user if we say well there's no facility to avoid setting up on their the problem is if you do that for very many, you're kind of back where you started. Yeah. I mean, right. Each each translation isn't that huge, but if you do it for a significant proportion of packages, well, right. But you could do things like having, you know, a package with ten T devs or but ten percent of translations why not? in each. Or no, but the problem is that, that you would end up doing what Ubuntu is doing. It's just uploading from time to time a huge one hundred megabytes Debian package, and just. Just because no, no, they, they are going to do it quite differently because their Ubuntu language packs are cross devs. They they, they they have a whole column in the table. Mm, yeah. Right? And anti devs are one cell in the table or maybe maybe some subset of a row, but not yes, they don't span rows. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we've got a whole bunch of, of KDE in particular documentation files which are which are pushing sort of thirty or hundred megabytes because they've got all the languages and they've got all the graphs of the screenshots in all the languages. Now, if you could split those out into TDEVs and have, say, five or ten TDEVs, which just were the relevant uh, language, language yeah, 
Whereas a, a get text file, which is just text, you can just have one team there, but maybe have a provides. This provides Romania, whereas in the, in the, in the, in the, the one with lots of screenshots in it, you have a separate TDEP for each language and, and sort of put a, some sort of size threshold on it, maybe. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I think that, that sounds like a, a good approach. If you do it like that, then you don't have to invent machinery that sits on the user system and filters out which things should be installed. And then when the user says later, actually, I wanted the Canadian French as well, because now I have some lodger staying who insists on Canadian and not for, not French French, and then you have to, <coughs> they, they tell this, they do something and the UIs do this and it has, and the computer has to get a headache trying to find out which package it needs to re-download and reinstall. It's just really painful. It'd be much better <coughs> if that just translated to install some more packages. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's why yeah, if they're not that big, then it's okay to install them, right? That's right. Like Right, so if, you, if you're happy bundling them in the same TDEB, then, then you're probably happy installing them all together. And if not, just yeah. balance with the match. Separate TDEB. Seems to me if you're not but, but just the, the, problem is, the, the problem is that you would have to change the semantics of the, of the package file name, because actually if you want to say provide something, then you would so have this to... So translations file, then the translations say, file yeah. needs to provide not for each, so you download the Romanian translations file, and it's going to tell you not just which version of each TDEP you want, so package name, version number, it's also going to have to tell you what language code to download. Yeah. There'll be some token in the file name. And you're going to have to have that anyway, right? So if you install Canadian French, and in fact it turns out that there are no separate Canadian French translations because who knows why, you then you're going to have to download the French French translations anyway. Yeah. And you wouldn't want to be able to do that with a mapping thing in the in the in the translation spot rather yeah. than having two identical yeah. TDEPs. Well, I think that that's but way too much going to deep. Let's say yeah. you don't want the French Canadian and you want you just want the French Canadian and you GFC don't want the French. That. I was just looking at that now for the deep package filtering. Uh, GWC supports the idea that you have yes. a, a very customized one where you have, or you have the generic French default. So, so by default, on, on a something like French Canadian, you would actually say to the user, well, for your case, you want French and French Canadian. So if it falls yeah. back, you fall back all the way to CS, yes, exactly. all the way back to POSIX. Yeah, yeah. That, that is implicitly supported within GWC. Exactly. So it's easy enough. So in that case, you might want to say something like, well, if you're installing package <coughs> and your locale is French Canadian, which you can tell because you're downloading the French Canadian translations file, the yeah. French translations Canadian file would, be, would say package version number oh, French yeah. French version number French Canadian version number. So we'd have to get a different version number for several because you might want to download several TDEPs. So we just not have the Canadian French things that I. Well, right, but they might be. Well, there will be Brazilian, Portuguese, and Portuguese. You can't get wrong that. Yeah, no, I'm just saying. In the case where there isn't one, and you download the more generic file anyway. Right, then but just having a normal file. Gipsy will sometimes fall back itself from Canadian French to French French, for example. Yeah. Well, is, is the point that the Canadian French file only contains the differences between that? No, it's a full translation. Okay, it's a full translation. So, so, oh, oh, right. Okay, in that case, in that case, you're right. You only need to download one T down. Per language. But it won't be a full translation of all packages. It should be. Well, you need to download one TDEP per language, except the case uh, the case where there is no uh, this specific one, no, in I, which I, case you will get redirected to the same. Just, just, a, just a second. Package. I think the most sane way to do it would be something like, okay, you want to install your system in French Canadian, but in, in that point, the installer or everything you want to do that you or an instruction manual which says how to do that it says explicitly if you want to do that and you want to have a fallback language you would have to activate French and French Canadian yeah. so actually DPKG just says okay which are the TT devs you want supplementary okay you want the French you want the T French Canadian and the Romanian okay they are they currently they're, they uh, the okay. package shouldn't yeah. have any notion of that. Right. Yeah. Okay. The, but, French but French the French and French, 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 French Canadian might well be in the same TDEP. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, in, which well, case, well, in which case, it's going to look in this file, it's going to say, 
Cool. There's going to be, have to be a file where it looks up and it says deepergooch. Well, for deepergooch, it, it's downloaded the translations files for French, French and Canadian French. And these two have to map to the same file. Yeah. Go down to the so that means the file name has to not say Canadian. <laughs> Again, for, for, some, for, some cases, for some cases, it will want to be able to do it. And in other cases, it will want to do it. It could do something like the language. Uh, oh, so you have French and French Canadian. So you get the same file. Yeah, you should make this file much smaller. Yeah, by the way, it's a wiki, exactly. Isn't it much simpler if you just have one language Oh, well, we've got two uh, yeah, no, 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 then we would have to have a unique translation file for all the languages. Every language will have to have its own translation file, yes. Yeah, and, and every language has to have its own translation file, so you cannot specify French and something else, so this is actually... No, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's just points to the same file in, in two different translation files. Oh, so you actually have translations in for French yeah. under... Yeah, the it's all the same as from specifying the, the language in the file. Uh, no, no, file he suggests then that there should be two files, two translations files, yes. which have the same file. Both go into the same file in front of Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, and I'm this not. field actually is gone. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. It doesn't so make sense because so you want meta Yeah. And the filter stuff is something uh, that, uh, that would be done in step two. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> if we decide we need it. Yeah. Actually, filtering. What about using inside that instead of using just control and data using the data FR and having only not to having to bother to fold, to, to extract then filter? It's we could not have going to buy you very much. Yeah. Um, um, because the data has to do that, you know, yeah. split actually the practice. Yeah. Um, well, no, 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 yeah. this will all be done also, whatever you do it will be done automatically during building the TDA. But the point is that Filtering isn't just the overhead of complicating the package format. If you filter the packages when you install them, you have a problem. Need to leave, guys. That if the user decides later to have another, and another language, they have to. The package system has to get a headache. Yeah. yeah. And this is all. This is all to save having something on the user's disk that we've already decided that they were prepared to download. Yeah. <coughs> Despite yeah, them not really wanting. Yeah, in, in, in the embedded world, it's something that we don't want. But yeah, it's true. In the real world, it doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 In the embedded world, it, it would be a problem. But yes. But there are how many translations to be in the embedded world? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, the big difference between a million and a quarter million. Uh, is the place shutting down here? Yeah, probably, yes. Okay. Should, 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 Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. So should we move this over to the night? Thank you.